Today I'm replacing the oil pan gasket on my 2008 Dodge Grand Caravan 3.8 liter. There's actually an upper gasket and a lower gasket. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do both. The upper one is a gasket like this. The lower one is just black silicone, so I might do them together. The first thing I did, first off make sure your engine's cool. You don't want to work on this with a hot engine. I jacked up the front of my vehicle and put it on jack stand so I can climb under there without getting claustrophobic. And then this little side panel goes right under here. There's two 10 millimeter bolts here and then there's these little clips that I pull out with a pair of dikes so I can get this shield out of my way. My oil pan gasket's been leaking for a while so I took this to the car wash and scrubbed it down as best as possible so I'm not dealing with a huge mess. There is a bracket here between the oil pan and the transmission that you have to take off so you can reach all the oil pan bolts. There are 15 millimeter bolts, I think there's seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pull those bolts out, then you can get this bracket out of your way. All right, so I guess nothing's ever easy, especially when you're trying to work on your own car on a Sunday. I've actually got to take this whole huge bracket off so that I can get this piece out. This bracket bolts to the front engine mount, so I need to stick a jack under the transmission or under the tranny pan. I always use a wood block when I do that so I don't dent the pan in. This bracket just has these four bolts and these two for the mount and then this guy which is pretty chewed up on mine. Hopefully I can get a socket on and get that loose without too much hassle. This, this front lower engine mount has a locator tab that goes down into this crossbar. So taking this bolt loose too will help you pull this huge bar out of the way. Pay attention as always to which bolts go where. Keep everything lined up. Manufacturers like to sometimes use different lengths of bolts and if you're trying to put a long bolt in a short hole, you'll find yourself running into some trouble. Also, as I'm pulling this apart, I've got this guy threaded a little bit so I don't drop this thing down onto myself. Perfect example of what I was just talking about. The back of this bracket has one little short bolt at the end, three long bolts that hold it up. So keep track of where everything went out so that you can put it back where it came from and don't wind up fighting yourself. You don't actually have to pull this thing all the way out to get that bracket out of your way. Up to you if you want it all the way down, but I just have it sitting by these last two bolts so that I can access all of the oil pan bolts. Next, take the oil pan bolts out. Here's a better view of that bracket I was trying to get out of my way. Seven bolts, all the same length, but just keeping everything together is a good idea. Even grab some sticky notes if you need to. These three bolts are for my front engine mount. The long one goes crossways. Keeping track of what you're doing, especially at especially if you're going back together at a later date, will save you a lot of problems. I leave the last one or two bolts loose a few threads, but still in the pan so it can be a counter hold so I don't drop it on my face. You might have to take a rubber hammer and lightly tap against the oil pan to knock it loose. So over here under the crank pulley, there's two locator bolts. You'll have nuts there instead of bolts when you're going back together. I've got the oil pan out, sorry. You want to make sure you have super clean surfaces, so scrub this all down and where the timing cover meets up, here and here and then back by the crank seal, you're going to put a dab of silicone. Make sure you clean all the old silicone off. Put a new dab of silicone. So this lower oil pan, the one that's black, it has a gasket too, but it's just silicone. Up to you if you want to reseal that while you have it apart. I don't think that mine was leaking. I think it was more this gasket right here, but why not do it since I have it out already and it's probably easier now. If you do reseal with silicone, make sure you allow curing time. Let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes or whatever the instructions say on your tube of silicone so that it doesn't leak when you get it back together. Make sure the engine block surface and the oil pan surface are both completely clean, free of old silicone. If you have a die grinder, 
with a rubber tip. That's a great way to clean this. You don't want to use anything harsher than rubber because these aluminum pans are easy to scratch. When you're going back together, you want to start all of the bolts by hand before you tighten any of them down. That way you make sure that the gasket's in place and you're not fighting yourself or cross-threading any bolts. The torque spec for these bolts is 105 inch-pounds, which really isn't crazy tight, so don't sit there wailing on it or you will squeeze the new gasket and have leaks again, or you could snap off a bolt and be in another world of hurt. So I've got the pan back on. I'm going to torque all the bolts to 105 inch-pounds, and then I'm going to let it sit, cure for at least about an hour so that the silicone um, has time to cure. Um, I'm also going to replace the filter since I'm replacing the oil. Why not do the whole job? Then I will start it up and check for leaks. That's about it.